It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Kyle Benedict as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives in Yavapai County. And now here's today's Countywide. Welcome to County Wide. I'm Paul David. As always, great to have you in studio with us today. Lieutenant Amy Bonney from Prescott Police Department in studio with us today, and Detective Keith Crabtree as well. Welcome to studio. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to talk about scams. We Amy, are. We are. You sent out a press release, was it last week, week before, about yes. a utility scam. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about that one and several other scams that are actually affecting the public uh, more so than I thought they would be because we've been talking about this for so many years. Whether it's Prescott Police, Prescott Valley Police, uh, Dwight Dillon at YCSO, we talk about this a lot about the different scams and they, they kind of pop up disappear and then they pop up again. For instance, last week on my cell phone, a week ago today actually, I got a call from a guy who was named John Malloy or John Maloney and he informed me in a very thick Eastern Indian accent that I had just won seven million dollars. Now when he called there was no return number on my phone so it was a blocked call. Yeah. So I told Mr. Maloney, I said, wow, seven million dollars? I'm really happy yeah, about that. Congratulations. Yeah. First thing clicked in my head is, of course, I do this for a living. So I told him, I said, I'm a news director, and we talk about these scams all the time. So I know this is a scam. He quickly came back and says, no, 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 this is not a scam. You need to trust me. If you do exactly as I say, you will win $7 million. And then I said to him, I said, how much money do I have to send in a green dot card for the taxes? And he hung up on me right there. So there was no way for me to find out who he was. I'm sure the name was fake. Everything was yeah. fake. I hadn't signed up for any sweepstakes. But this is pretty common. Something like that, right? It is. It is. You know, something that um, is really frustrating for us as uh, law enforcement professionals and for, you know, investigators like Detective Crabtree, um, because it really is so hard to trace and so many people are susceptible to it. And it, it seems so enticing and it seems, you know, too good to be true, as we say. Mm -hmm. And um, it happens so frequently. People fall victim to it a lot, though. Yeah, they, they do. And, you know, when they prey on, you know, the, the, the portions of our community that are more susceptible, you know, that might not be, you know, as aware of or, or might be more naive to the world and the way things are. And they might call them up and sound like really nice professional people, but mm -hmm. they're actually scam artists, you know. And, again, if it sounds too good to be true, you know, it, it, it is mm -hmm. too good to be true. And I uh, guess... <sighs> My wife is also dealing with a man who's actually put out, shut out thousands upon thousands of dollars. He was told that he won $8 million. Mm -hmm. And the last conversation she had with him, the, the so-called man who was delivering this briefcase of money was how I guess he described it was this briefcase of money, was in Winslow and was getting ready to come to the financial institution to, you know, help this guy drop the money off. But before he did that, I'm going to need another thousand dollars to get yeah. from Winslow to Flagstaff. I need a thousand dollars. This guy said, I don't have $1,000, I've got 400 Well, I can take that and I'll make up the difference myself and then you can pay me back once I give you this briefcase of money. So this guy, all he's hearing is briefcase of money, $8 million. Next time, he got another phone call a week later, now he's won a Mercedes Benz. And that seems to be the common one, especially I think Dwight Devlin sent that one out numerous times where it's, you've either won multi-millions of dollars or you've won a Mercedes Benz or you've won both. This case, it was, we got the lottery guy calling with a scam about the money mm -hmm. that, of course, does not exist. And he was not in Winslow. Who knows where he was? Right. And there was never, ever a return phone number or anything like that could be done. Then the Mercedes Benz came into play. So now he's shelling out more money for this Mercedes Benz, which, of course, is never going to come to fruition yeah. as well. Yeah, once they, once they get their hooks into somebody and somebody's a believer, I mean, they're, they're going to, you know, for lack of a better term, milk that person for as much as they can. Mm -hmm. So if this person's believing that, hey, they won the lottery and they're going along with it, they're going to keep pushing it and add and add more and more to it to get more money out of them. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that is a, that's commonly what happens. You know, and you got to think from their standpoint, if they try, if they only get one out of every 25 people, right. I mean, it's a score for them. I mean, most of us are going to realize that's a scam and say no. But all they gotta do is get that one out of every so many people and they got they got the scam going. This victim has to be 76 in poor health. The wife is yeah. in a home and, and has no idea what's going on. And they have children, but the children aren't involved with, with mom and dad anymore. They're disassociated with them. So mm -hmm. he's pretty much on his own on this. Right. But some of these folks are difficult to tell them that this is a scam. You are being scammed, don't do this. 
Um, yes. They've tried bringing in the police, which is always a great idea to bring the police and to say this is a scam, you're being scammed, but this guy really wants this. It's, it's important to him. Yep. Let me ask you this question. First of all, this money, once you send these thousands of dollars away, I think he's been milked for like $4,000 so far. When I send this money away on this green dot card, am I ever going to see that money again with your investigation going on? Uh, no. It's gone? No. When you send that money, it's, it's for, for the most part, it's gone. There might be rare exceptions where, you know, it happens, but once, once, when you send that money, you're, you're not going to get that money back. Mm -hmm. um, most of these scams, um, you know, uh, are coming from outside of the country um, so that money goes out and we really have no at a local level ability to really investigate and go and and, and get that back um, so sadly when when you send that money out it, it, it's gone okay when John Malloy calls me and tells me I've won seven million dollars let's say I fall for it hook line and sinker mm -hmm. and I start sending him cash do we know if they take that number and give it to other people kind of like a telemarketer like telemarketers do where they share your number across the board and you've got all these people calling you well is it possible that they send that to say Bob Thompson over here hey guess what this guy over here is on the line for this eight million dollars he thinks he's gonna get it why don't you try the Mercedes-Benz scam on him too I, I would not be surprised at all I would absolutely say that's a possibility okay yeah. all right yeah yeah all right so if I haven't signed up for a lottery ever, which I've never done, odds are no one's going to call me and tell me I've won money. More likely than not, no. Yeah. No, and that's, you know, if you sign up for something, say you're at the mall and you see those, you know, free car or they have those little clear boxes that you can put your information in, you know, that's, that's a, a legitimate advertising and marketing type of thing where you gave right. your information out, you expect somebody to call you about a car or about a vacation or whatever type of thing it is. But just having somebody call you out of the blue and the sweepstakes that you've never entered, you've never you know, contacted anybody in Italy about winning a, a national lottery there, yeah. chances are you didn't win that. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of chuckle, but it's sad because they do prey on the elderly and that that is that is just horrible because these people have usually fixed incomes and now they're taking all their money right. away from them. Uh, before we get to our first break, which is just a few minutes away, we did have the utility scam pop up, and I noticed this time when I saw your press release, Amy, that there was a real sense of urgency by the suspect to the victim about, okay, you you owe. $768, I believe, was the number. We need that within 30 minutes or we're shutting your power off. Right. Yeah, they basically tried to hold him hostage. Right. And in that particular case, it was a, a local business. And the victim is thinking, um, you know, oh my gosh, I have to keep my power on. I have to be able to operate my business. And in the back of his mind, he's thinking, I know I paid that bill. I know I don't owe this. But what if? Mm -hmm. And it was just that little, t you know, that little bit of doubt, that little bit of, oh my gosh, I don't want my power to be shut off. And so, okay, let me deal with this in the, you know, the immediate situation and um, work it out later. And so he did end up paying them, um, I think around $400 initially um, before he made a phone call to the actual power company and realized that it was a scam. And that probably should have been done. That was, should have been done right away. Yes. Now, if you're a scam artist and I'm the victim, if I ask you for your phone number, you're not really going to be, probably odds are you won't give me a return phone number. Right. Correct. Right. Or if you do, it's going to be a fake one. Right. So in, in, okay. in most of these cases, Keith, what should we really be doing? If, what, we, if we suspect this. You, what, you can eliminate most of these by doing a little bit of investigation on your own. For example, you, first of all, if anybody's calling you and pressuring you, give me this much money or else, or promise you something that's too good to be true if you give money. Red flag right off the bat, that's likely a scam. If you doubt it, do a little bit of research on your own. Google actually is a great resource. You can go on a search engine, type in certain scams or certain keywords. And if it's a scam, a lot of times there'll be all kinds of stories telling you that it's a scam mm -hmm. from different people that have been scammed. Um, that's a great resource. Um, on APS, or uh, we had one where somebody was claiming that it, they were the IRS, you know, hang up with that person that's calling you and putting that pressure on you. Go find the correct number for APS, the IRS. Call yourself, ask for a supervisor, and find out what's going on. You can you can you can figure it out on your own. Take it into you know don't don't be a hostage. That person on the phone is trying to make you 
um, pay this money and, 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 and get what they want. You need to go do a little bit of investigation and you can find out relatively quickly that if, if it's a scam or not. And those businesses don't operate that way. If, if you owe right. money like that, they're going to send you notices in the mail and multiple ones before anything like that even happens. Right. But I can see where a business owner will be saying, oh my gosh, the restaurant opens in five minutes. Yes. I yeah. can't have my power off in 30 minutes. That's right. crazy. I'll be shut down for the day. Yep. We have to take a break, okay? Yep. Uh, Prescott Police Lieutenant Amy Bonney in studio today along with uh, Detective Keith Crabtree. This is County Wide. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. At Gettles High Desert Mechanical, rather than do lots of things, we focus on doing one thing right. We serve climate challenged people. Gettles starts with a free system evaluation to identify the best AC and heating equipment for your home or business. Professional installation, warranties, and service after the sale. If you're climate challenged, then we're the right choice. Gettles High Desert Mechanical, the name to trust. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year? One in 195 million. The odds of the child being diagnosed with autism, one in 68. I'm Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Welcome back to Countywide. Prescott Police Lieutenant Amy Bonney in studio, Detective Keith Crabtree as well. We're talking about scams today that uh, we keep seeing circulate throughout the news over and over and over again. You guys hear about them probably way more than I do even. Uh, we were just talking about the IRS one where this is the IRS, you owe $3,000, put this amount of money on the green dot card, send it to us. You'll be clear and fine. Uh, that one goes right along with the utility scam. Your power's going to be shut off in 30 minutes if you don't send me this amount of money right now. And I, I know we've had several businesses fall for that over the last few years. That one also reminded me of the warrant one where somebody calls me and says, hey, Paul, you've got a $3,000 warrant. This is Lieutenant Amy Bonnie from Prescott Police. You owe us $3,000 for this warrant. We're going to come arrest you. you got, we have that one as well, right? Yeah, we've seen that. And, you know, that sounds like a real easy way for us to clean up our warrant list. Right. But that isn't how we operate. Right. So <laughs> if you think you might have a warrant, the easiest way to, to clear that up is to contact the court or contact your local police department. That's going to be the common theme today, isn't it, too? Yeah. When somebody calls you and says you owe money, hang up and call whoever it is you're supposedly owing money that this person says you owe money to and check on it first. Right, verify. Because that little window in there, like the business, paid the money first and then found out you don't owe us anything. Right. Same thing's going to be with the warrant, same thing's going to be with the IRS. So mm -hmm. that's going to be the common thread yes. here. And, and, and same thing with taking online jobs or jobs on Craigslist um, that work from home jobs. There's a, a, a growing trend of people who end up being victims themselves taking what seems like an easy stay at home job uh, from a job they take on Craigslist where there's limited information given about your employer, sometimes false information given about your employer, or someone, for example, might be running an IT scam on a computer and they tell you that you're simply a middle person, you simply are a money manager for this legitimate company and they have you basically holding money and distributing money. Well basically you're you're basically laundering or holding money for the scam artists that are often in another country and then that person, the middle person who took the job on Craigslist ends up 
ultimately sometimes getting their accounts frozen and they end up being victims also. So you can also be scammed by taking a job that you don't thoroughly vet and investigate that seems too good to be true. Mm -hmm. So be aware of that also. There's a lot of them out there, isn't there? Yes. These are pretty yes. creative people. People. And before the show, we were saying, why don't you just go out and get a job? Yeah. Yeah. Get a job, invent something, do something like that. Yeah. Uh, credit cards, another one. Uh, Candy up front was telling me that she had a conversation with a woman who's 83, and she was talking about how uh, somebody had called and said uh, there was a charge on your credit card with, with the credit card company. Um, you know, do you shop here? Do you shop there? Because these are the charges that were on your card. And, and she was like, well, no, those those are not, I don't, I don't shop there. Well, what's your card number? And let me check and find out, make sure we've got the right card number for you. So there again, she was, bright lady said, I'm not going to give you my credit card number. Mm -hmm. But that right. is also something that we're seeing a lot of. Mm -hmm. yep. Personal yep. information. Yeah, you'll get that. Um, you'll get text messages on your phone saying they're with your bank. Sometimes they're legitimate. Some some of the, some people are signed up in a text alert system through their bank, but sometimes you'll get texts from banks that aren't necessarily your bank. Maybe sometimes it is your bank. It might be a scam where they're trying to get you to give personal information or they want your PIN number to your card so they can then go make things right based on whatever scam they're trying to give you. But you'll get text alerts and be contacted by people claiming to be your bank. Again, don't trust that. Call your bank. <laughs> and confirm it yourself and then talk to an actual person that, yeah, you know, as soon as you go to investigate and you're making the call, you take the control. Don't let somebody calling you and somebody control you from the other side. That's a good point. That's yeah. a real good point. Take control of it. Grandma, it's Paul. I'm in Mexico. We parted a little okay. too hard last night. I got arrested. Mm -hmm. I'm in some trouble. I need $3,000 to get out of this Mexican jail. That happens a lot. We yeah. see that. And we'll have people say, yes, I didn't know my grandson or granddaughter was taking a trip to Mexico. And that's the kind of thing families share with each other. And so they're surprised when they get a call from, you know, like you said, Paul, I'm in Mexico and I need help. And their first instinct is to help. And then they're out a couple thousand dollars and they call and realize their grandson was in Flagstaff the whole time. And, that, and, and they're vulnerable on that one, too, because a lot of, let's face it, a lot of grandkids don't necessarily keep in touch with their grandparents or their great-grandkids don't necessarily call their great-grandparents that much. So it might be very rare that a grandparent actually gets a call from their grandson or a great-grandson. So when, you know, when they finally get a call from someone, they might not necessarily recognize the voice. They might just assume it is the voice and it, it might be more believable because they're not having that regular contact. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that one is is a, is a successful one, unfortunately, for the bad guys. And, and that one also, too, it, it kind of it kind of tears. It's like, I need $3,000 for this bail money. And then all of a sudden, sometimes a so-called law enforcement officer gets on and says, well, we need this much more as well for this part. And then Paul's attorney calls and says, well, I need $4,000 for my attorney fees. And then the court calls and says, I need another $5,000 for the court fees and pretty mm -hmm. soon. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. You know, as, yeah. as long as you're willing to to go and put that money, is is the green dot money pack cards? Is that pretty much the common way now? Money orders, things like that. It's not like yeah. a credit card number or yeah. anything like that, is it? No. Yeah, they usually want you to send Western Union or something like that. Just it, it basically makes it hard to trace the money. So that's where they they they, they do that. So Would that be a warning sign if yeah. somebody tells me I need to put money on a one of those cards? Yes, yeah. absolutely. What happens when they get those card numbers? then they have your money. Yep. That's basically That's just like cash gone. and it's gone. It's gone, mm -hmm. it's gone. And we have no real authority to go get that money back as we mentioned earlier in the show. You know, and mainly it's, especially when it's out of the country, mm -hmm. um, we don't, um, the, the, the federal government, the FBI, Secret Service, they have some tools at their disposal where they can, you know, build some cases sometimes against some out of, uh, out of, out of country, large scale scams, but, um, but it's, it's very rare. Okay, all right, we'll take another break. Um, other other scams we, we should mention is uh, another big one is the overseas boyfriends real fast, that, that uh, you get this guy who calls and says, hey, I need this amount of money for a plane ticket to get back home, and then you just keep sending money, and they can't make it, can't make it, can't make it, and you just get sucked into that one too. Yeah. Lieutenant Amy Bonney from the Prescott Police Department in studio today, Detective Keith Crabtree as well. I'm Paul David County Wide back in just a couple minutes. What's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. Okay. 
But remember, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. At Gettles High Desert Mechanical, rather than do lots of things, we focus on doing one thing right. We serve climate-challenged people. Gettles starts with a free system evaluation to identify the best AC and heating equipment for your home or business. Professional installation, warranties, and service after the sale. If you're climate-challenged, then we're the right choice. Gettles High Desert Mechanical, the name to trust. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. And to follow the swimming rules. You're always looking out for me and trying to keep me safe. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? Here in the garage. Closet. Shoe box under the bed. Where anyone can get to it. How safe is that? How safe is that? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. If you own a firearm and are not using it, please be responsible and be sure that it's stored in a safe place. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. Welcome back to County Wine. We've got just a couple of minutes back in the program, uh, but IC3.gov, Keith, you said is a yes. really great website. IC3.gov. Yes, what that does basically is it, it is a government, it's a federal government website okay. where with these international scams, your your FBI, your Secret Service, your your federal agencies, they have some tools at their disposal that they can do with addressing certain large scale scams. Uh, what this does is this kind of helps them triage okay or, or and kind of get a gauge of how large a scale certain scams and frauds are so what you do at ic3.gov is if you're a victim of a scam or you're aware of it or you're you someone tried to scam you you can go to that website report some details and it goes into basically a database and a, an information base where then the federal investigators can kind of gather and take pieces from from here and there different parts of the country mm -hmm. and make a determination um, what cases they can have an ability to go after and what they can do and which ones they're going to prioritize based on their size. So um, I, I recommend, um, you know, th going to that website and putting that information down. If you if you come in contact with a scam or someone tries to scam you, document it on that website because there is a chance that someone at the federal level you know, if it gets large enough and they get the right information, they might go to do some things. So I see three dot gov. So actually, yeah. I should probably go to something like that yeah. and type in. Okay, this guy said his name was either John Maloney or John Malloy. Yes. And this is what he offered me: seven million dollars. And I've. You know, that's really all, as far as the conversation went, yeah. because he almost made a point to kind of slur the contest that I'd won. Yeah. And I three or four times over could not get the exact sweepstakes that I had won yeah. that of course again and I never signed tactic. up for that's a tactic too they're just trying to get over you know mm -hmm. it, it, you know when you start out they're, they're vague you start asking questions they're vague they don't want to give the information they change the subject um, you know that's just part of their tactic to get to the point that they want but but no that's a good resource as far as there being a chance to get some of these overseas people um, mm -hmm. the Attorney General's office also has a lot of resources a lot of information for scams locally to azag.gov um, they, um, they they specialize in fraud and scams, and they're kind of up to date on a lot of the current scams and stuff. So that's another resource for you too. Now, if I am scammed, I should contact you guys right away. Absolutely. Yes. It, yes. It, you know, if I'm out some money and stuff, and I get scammed, I should contact you Definitely guys. Definitely contact and us. Get the ball rolling yeah, there. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Or ideally, even when you just become aware of something suspicious, mm -hmm. just let us know. We yeah. would much rather you know take those phone calls and answer those questions from our our citizens and our community members, and right. and get ahead of it before we have more people fall victim them to these types of things. Right on. Keith, yep. great to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Amy, good to see you. you That's today's County Wide. I'm Paul David. We'll talk to you again next time.